How's it going guys? So today's tutorial is a part two of the last shading tutorial I made. If you haven't seen it, uh, you definitely want to watch that first before going into this one because I'm going to assume you have seen that one. So I'm going to assume a little bit of knowledge, but by the end of today's tutorial through learning those steps and things that I'm going to teach you, we're going to be making this really cool greeble procedural material. It's totally procedural. There is no displacement happening in this plane. And there's also only one face of geometry. It is all completely procedural. And it's really cool. We have fun little details going on in here. So let's hop on over. And by the end of this, you're going to know what all of these nodes are. And it's really not that complicated. It's really just cutting things up into sections and building it out. It's sort of like what we did last week, just doing that a couple times and then merging them together. That's kind of the basic concept, but I'm going to show you how to merge stuff and how to get them to talk to each other. If you want to just purchase this material, you can get it in the description for a dollar. Everybody on Patreon, you'll be getting that for free on all three tiers. If you're not aware of the Patreon, I release several exclusive tutorials a month. I talk about my client work. I have a really cool project walkthrough that I'm going to be going through, and that's going to be up in a couple days. So many cool things. We have the new stucco material pack that came out this month. We release 10 procedural materials a month on the Patreon. We have, I think, around maybe 80 or 90 so far. Um, in total on the Patreon. So you can go check all that out. And yeah, let's get into this project. All right, so first we're just gonna get in a flat plane of geometry and I like to scale it up just a little bit. So I'm gonna hit S5, Control A and apply the scale. You need to apply the scale, otherwise the materials aren't gonna scale up correctly. They're gonna pave a little bit differently than mine versus yours. So let's hop on over here to shading. And we are here in the look dev. I always like to crunch these uh, windows in. I should probably just have that in by default but I always forget. So I'm going to uh, bring this up here and we're just gonna be looking at this plane here. So we're gonna click new. And uh, here we have the principled BSDF, our best friend. We're gonna slide on over here to metallic and make the color a little bit darker. Now I'm gonna show you the very basic principle of the concept I'm gonna show you as the uh, goal for this tutorial. So again, like I said, two different things speaking to each other. So I'm gonna hit shift D and duplicate this guy and I want them both to be plugged into here. Uh, we can't do that without a mix shader, not a mix RGB, but a mix shader. Can't type today in my X, mix shader, pop that in there, and we're gonna pop this guy here on the bottom shader socket. And I usually like to just bring him up here for visual organization purposes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the roughness all the way down to zero here on this one so you can differentiate which ones are speaking. So like always, get your color ramp here, plug that here. You always have to have a color ramp so you can crunch anything going behind it, adding you a really good level of control. I'm gonna get a Voronoi. We're gonna be using a lot of Voronoi for this tutorial just because they all kind of look good together and uh, I want this to look cool as the end product. I'm gonna hit Control T while clicking on the Voronoi and using the object coordinate. Like I mentioned in the last tutorial, you need to have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled. Comes in Blender by default, just go and look at it. Look for it in the modifiers. All right, so here on so here on distance, we're gonna be plugging the distance into the color ramp. And as you can see, it's looking funny. It's looking interesting. I remember my scale down to one so things get bigger. Now you can see these two different materials speaking. I'm gonna go from linear to constant, giving this whole thing a hard edge so we can see things more clearly. This is how you can make polka dots, by the way. Um, so now you can see which ones are speaking where. So this whole line, of, of course, is spitting out this black and white image going into the factor. And you can see these two sockets here. So it's saying any ones that are black show this really glossy material. And any ones that are white, of course, in this black and white image, show this rough material. And that is the very basic bones version of what we're going to be doing here. But we're, I'm going to show you a bunch of more cool things here. I can't speak today. That's terrible grammar. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back here and um, say this, and then I'm going to go here to Chevy Chev. I want to get a very blocky look. And then one thing I like to do is go from F1 to F2. F2 just seems to have more detail in the Voronoi pattern, and I'm a big fan of that. So you can see how this has way more detail in different lines and things like that rather than the other one. So we have this. Now, I want the rough portion to actually be kind of extruding out, giving me some depth, giving me some bump. So the bump node is what we want. So we're gonna be 
focusing on this principle first. So we're gonna be making a nice big string of nodes. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight these guys. I'm gonna hit G to bring it up and let's go ahead and get that bump node. So Shift A, B, U, M, bump node. And we're gonna put the normal here into the normal. And then we want to use this Voronoi but we don't want to use this color ramp because this color ramp is set to constant. So you, when we plug it into the bump node, we actually won't get any detail because it's flattening the whole situation. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight these. I'm going to take this guy and hit shift D and then on constant, go back here to ease. So now you can see there's a gradient allowing it to be more bumpy rather than flat. So I'm going to bring him down here and plug him into the height. And then I'm just going to take this, use the distance, very important to use the distance and not the color. The distance allows you to get bump and not flat. And then we're gonna plug that there. And so now you can see that's going on. I'm gonna bring this back here to normal. And then now we have really cool bumping going on. It's a really cool pattern, it's really nice. But okay, this is cool enough, but it's really just smooth. And I wanna add more detail. I want it to be a really cool looking greeble material. So one really cool thing you can do is you can add endless amounts of bumping detail by just getting another bump node. So shift D and you'll plug the normal to the normal onto this bump node so it speaks to this one. I'll get another Voronoi texture, V-O-R, Voronoi texture. I'm gonna get this whole mapping situation, plug it into the vector on my node. And then um, we're gonna get the distance here and plug it into, actually let's get the color because I don't want it to be uh, I just want it to be flat. So now you can see we have more bumping going on. And then I'll go from Illusidian to Manhattan. So we can get some really cool looks here. And then we can bring that up a little bit. And now we have another level of detail on top of this. And then we can bring the strength down if you don't want it to be super strong. I like it right here. And here we are. We have a really nice greeble. So now what last thing I want to do is add a little bit of roughness detail here like we did in the last video. I do want to bring these guys back a little bit just for organization and visual. So I'm going to get another color ramp. So I'm going to duplicate him, plug into the roughness here, and then I'm going to get a Musgrave. That's my favorite to get uh, a little added detail onto uh, metal. So I'm going to plug that there. And we're going to plug the height right here into the color ramp. So let's get that just like that. So now it looks all messed up. What we're going to do is get the dimension down to zero, detail up. And so now we have this. We're going to click on the black portion because it's too glossy. We don't like that. Bring this up to something like this. And then now what I don't like is how contrasty it is in terms of the, the rough to gloss ratio. So I'm going to click the white and bring it closer to the gray. So if you bring it here, it's almost non-existent. So we can bring it something like this. And now you have some subtle detail in your greeble, which is super, super cool. If, also, if you don't know what greeble means, it just means like blocky, techy looking sci-fi stuff. So now we have a little bit of detail in our roughness, but not too much. It's not too loud and we don't want super loud. So now we have that. Now we could start focusing on this really, really shiny portion. And so that is going to be this guy. So now we're going to be working on that. So I'm going to just highlight these guys and move them up just like this. And let's focus on designing him. So this is going to be a really cool, fun one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go straight here and get in a bump node and get in a color ramp here. Just the standard procedure, just like that. So normal and then color here into the height. We're gonna get our brick, this time B, B, R. We'll get our brick texture, cause that'll be a fun one. And then I'm just gonna get a new mapping situation for this one, so Control T after clicking on the brick texture and using the object coordinate, and then plug in the color into the color ramp. And so now we have detail in the super glossy portion. And I'm gonna bring my roughness up just so it's not quite as annoying. So now we have this, what I always like to do is um, I'll bring my mortar smoothness to something like this. It gives you a bigger gap. Um, so if you bring mortar smoothness like that, so you just want them touching. And then we'll bring our mortar uh, size. I'm gonna give it 0 0.05. Actually, sorry, I messed that up. Bring it here. I like that. So now we have this. We can bring it up, pretty big detail. 
and then let's go and screw with it here on the vector line like I showed you in the last video and we're going to get in a Voronoi. Voronoi texture. Let's go ahead and make it chevy chev here and then we'll pop it right here on the vector line and we're going to use distance, super important. Let's get that mix RGB situation like we did last time right here. Also, this can just be really cool as a standalone thing. It actually speaks more motherboardy if you want, but I want to kind of change it up a little bit. Um, so now we have that and use this object coordinate on color too so we can um, make them speak to each other. So now we have the factor here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring the factor in until we have something like this. Now we have this. And so now we have a more interesting pattern here on the bottom. And then all I want to do now is take these guys here, shift D, duplicate it, and we'll plug them into the roughness. We'll also just plug this mapping situation here into the vector. And then I want him, this bottom portion, to be less rough and more glossy. So we'll bring this all the way down here to something like that. And then now we have that. It's a little too dirty looking, so we'll bring him to speak just like that. Okay. So now we have this really cool situation like that, it looks like. So now, I don't like how much space there is, so we'll go here to this top portion, going into the original one, which is controlling everything. So we can bring him something like that. And say I can bring this a little bit bigger as well. So now we have this really cool situation. Last thing I wanna do is add some glowing lights. How do I do that? Now you technically could use this emission socket, but I really don't like it. It's just not very powerful and it's not really a lot of control. Um, it has its uses a lot of times with fog and different stuff like that, but in this case, it's just not gonna work. So we're gonna treat it like we just did. So I'm gonna just for visual representation, hit G and bring all these guys over here. I like to keep them separated just so that we can tell who is who. So keep here, keep this here. And then we'll highlight all these guys and then bring them here. And then we can bring this guy just like that. Okay, so now we have this big setup here. What I want to do is get another mix shader. So I'll duplicate him, plug him here. So now, of course, we're still dealing with this bottom portion, which is this um, really detailed portion here. But now we're going to get another mix shader and an emission. Get an emission node and we'll plug it here on this bottom socket like this and you can now you'll see it start to speak to it just like that all we're gonna do is get really simple we'll get a Voronoi and then we will use this uh, mapping here on the Voronoi we do need to get a color ramp col color ramp we'll plug the uh, we'll plug the color here we'll get a Chebyshev F2 for more detail and then we'll plug it here into the factor. And so now you can kind of see it working. We'll bring our color here to blue, bring our strength up, and then we'll bring this in. If we can actually just put it to constant to get that hard edge. And then now we have some glowing lights. I'll pop on over here to my EV settings really quickly so we can see bloom just for the fun of it. And now we have something really cool and you can bring it up, you can bring it down more subtle bring up the scale to bring down the scale all that fun stuff and now we've created a really crazy looking really really cool greeble material and uh, yeah now one quick tip here if you go back here to shading say these look like they're going in they're sticking in and not sticking out you can go here to the uh, the bump node so now we're dealing with these big portions right here on this node if you click invert It'll look like they're going in, so you can see how it is. So you can make them go in or out. It's kind of an optical illusion, so you'll have to figure it out. But uh, you, in case they're you know, cutting in instead of poking out, you can deal with that. So now we've created this really cool greeble board, and you can even apply that to any geometry you want. I'll just subdivide this and smooth them out. And uh, say so I'll hide him. So see, we'll go to material view and apply that new material. And now we have it on a circle. And see, so I can scale him up just like that. He kind of behaves weird on a circle, but again, 
it's a procedural material. You can do whatever you want, apply it to any material. You can apply this to a character, anything you want. You can have tons of fun and it's just super, super cool and detailed. Now you can use this concept on anything you want, not just metallic materials, but more organic or like leather, cloth, anything you want, you can really speak to as many things as you want and have them really behave in a very cool, interesting way. And there's endless possibilities with this. So that is part two. I think I'll probably be stopping the series um, here. This is kind of my regular process when making material. So I don't really get any more complex than that. Um, so yeah, thank you guys for watching and I hope you learned something.